Hi everyone, Techie Prepper here. I'm back. I know it's been a while, it's been a little over a month since I released a video, I think. I had a few things going on, not to get too much into my personal business, but uh, I had COVID, as many of you may know, and thank you for the well wishes for those who uh, wrote me. I appreciate it. Um, it took about 10 days, uh, a lot of rest, a lot of vitamins, and a lot of Oreo Delt stuffs, man. I powered through it. Uh, thank you, Nabisco. And then I've been helping my mother lately. My father passed away a little over a year ago. She decided to downsize her residence, so I've been helping her clean out things and uh, get settled into her new place. And then I did some uh, upgrades here at my house. So um, I've had a few things going on, but I'm back. So what did I miss? <laughs> I can tell you, I didn't miss much. I didn't miss higher gas costs. I didn't miss our power grid being overloaded, uh, brownouts, blackouts. Uh, I didn't miss uh, inflationary food prices. Um, I didn't miss flooding that's going on now. I didn't miss storms in the Midwest. Um, uh, they missed me, but I didn't miss them. So I know I owe y'all uh, two other videos. I owe you a shortwave radio tutorial video, and I owe you a water harvesting video that I mentioned in the past. But um, I make these videos to help people, so I think this is a more timely uh, subject. So um, with inflationary food prices, one of the best ways to fight that and to get ahead of it is to buy food when it's on sale and freeze it for use later. So um, if you already have a freezer, great. If not, you can buy a five cubic foot chest freezer for say 150 to 175, you can find them around. Um, you know, invest in one of those, buy food on sale, freeze it. Um, and uh, you know, that'll help, help you long-term um, keep the cost down. Now, throw all these other things into the mix, all these other uh, situations, you know, brownouts, um, storms, etc., where you may lose power. You don't want to lose the money you have invested in the food inside that freezer. So there's several ways that you can uh, prepare for that. The first one would be a generator. If you have a generator, great. Um, use that while you can, but uh, if it's long-term, several days, uh, chances are you'll probably run out of gas and everybody else will be fighting for gas because everybody in your immediate area is gonna be under the same emergency conditions you are, so uh, there's gonna be a fight for those resources. Another way is to build a solar system that will run your freezer 24 seven where you don't have to worry about the grid. Um, on the wall behind me, I built one. Uh, that has been running my freezer 24 um, seven for over a year now. But if you don't have the time, energy, um, or will to actually build that, Understandable, but there is a third way, and that is by using a portable solar power pack. Um, and uh, that's our solar generator. They're called a couple different things these days. You have it charged up, ready to go. When an emergency hits, you plug it into there, and that will run your freezer. What we're going to do today is we're going to use a 500 watt uh, Life PO4 power station. It's fully charged up. It's ready to go. We're going to plug in a five cubic foot chest freezer and we're gonna run it until it drops. Okay, now let's see where we're at. It's been about an hour. Let's see exactly. Oh, yeah, it's been exactly an hour. We started at 10.50 a.m. It's 11.50 a.m. now. Let's see where we're at on our power. So we're at, we started at 100%, we're at 91%, so we've used 9% of its capacity so far in an hour. Um, and we've used 0.04 kilowatts, uh, so that's 40, 40 watts so far. So, um, it's a little higher than I expected. When I first got this, I think, uh, I tested it with my kilowatt and, uh, this particular freezer was running about 35, I believe is averaging 35 watts per hour. Not so, not so bad. So let's um, give it another hour and see where we're at. See if it continues the trend of using, uh, you know, nine to ten percent per hour. Okay, so the compressor just kicked on. I was waiting to show you exactly how much it pulls. So let's see. Let's see, it's twelve eleven. It's about twenty minutes since um, we last looked at it, and I've been waiting here. And you can see uh, it's pulling. The compressor kicked on, and it pulled. Uh, about four to 500. It was fluctuating, it was so quick. Um, it's that inrush of current when the compressor first kicks on. So it hit that spike of four or 500, and now it settled down to between 60 and 70. 
uh, watts. So how this works is it, it's a little higher than the 40 that we've been averaging, but that's because the compressor only kicks on once or twice per hour. So it's not pulling 65 here as it shows continuous. So it might kick on once, it might kick on twice per hour and pull those watts. So it averages out to about 40, but we're gonna let it run again and we're gonna see where we end up um, the next hour to see if it pulls it down about another 10%. See if we're uh, going linear with our, our, our power draw here. So here we are in hour two, as you can see, it's 12.51 right now, and we are 81% capacity. Um, it's actually on right now, the freezer's on, drawing 55 watts approximately. You can see we have about seven hours until empty, and our capacity is 81%, so we've used 19% uh, so far. So we're probably going to end up averaging about 10% per hour, which at this rate would give us uh, you know, approximately 10 hours. So. Uh, we're going to keep on going. We can see the kilowatt hours used is uh, 0 0.08, so that's 80. So that's right on, right on target, um, according to the math. So we'll come and check back in just a little bit. I'm going to go a little real world on you here because if this were the case and the power was out, we'd want to eat, right? So um, I'm going to show you that we can accomplish both tasks at the same time. Um, so, you know, if you go by my username, that's the Techie Prepper, right? So I do have a little bit of food stashed away, and I rotate through that. So what I have is a little 120-watt Bella Crock-Pot, and I've got some Wolf Chili in there. Lord help us all. Um, so we're going to uh, actually try to get this fired up here. Now, you can see I have them both plugged in, and we're going to fire this thing up. Put it on low and it draws 72 watts. We're gonna put it on high. And we're pulling 125. So don't worry, at the end of this, um, I have the calculations on my kilowatt, so I'll be able to differentiate between the usage of the two and I will do the simple math. So that we'll know if you wanna just run the freezer, you'll know how much uh, you'll be able to run it. Uh, if you wanted to do both, we'll see where we end up. Now, I will speak more to having a plan, a uh, long-term plan to run this later in the video at the end. But what I would do if this were a real-world power outage right now is I would disconnect the freezer from the pack after it runs this time. I would actually let it run this time, and then I would disconnect it. It'd probably be about 50% at that point. What I would do is I would take it outside. It's a nice day out. I would hook it up to the uh, associated 100 watt solar panel and I would leave it out there for about two hours because any chest freezer should be able to withstand two hours with just a minor rise in the temperature. So you can actually alternate it. So you can run it for two hours and then you can take it outside, charge it up. Then you could run it for two hours, take it outside and charge it up. And you can repeat uh, that as often as necessary. That'll keep you uh, pretty much caught up all day and then overnight, you can just let it run. And then you should get, you know, eight to 10 hours at that point. But as for right now, I'm gonna eat my lunch and then we'll come back and check this at the three hour mark. Okay, I finished my lunch. Uh, as you can see, we finished our third hour here. It is now 1.51. And we can't go by this um, because I actually used a crock pot, a small crock pot. Um, which used approximately one hour's worth of uh, energy out of this. We go over to the kilowatt because this is an accurate representation of what the freezer has used because it's only in line with the freezer. So it's showing how much energy that that used taking out the crock pot. So as you can see, it's 100 watts. So we've used 100 watts over three hours. So our consumption is starting to drop a little bit. And I thought this averaged, when I first got it, I thought I tested it, and I thought it averaged about 35 watts per hour. So we're getting back down to that, that range. So um, anyways, I am not going to check this every hour. 
Um, I will check it, but I'm not going to video it and bore you guys to death. And then uh, I'll come out towards the end of the capacity and we'll see what we got out of it. And we'll calculate exactly how long we can run the five cubic foot freezer on a 500 watt portable power pack or solar generator. Well, every hour I've been out here. So uh, it has been using approximately 35 watts on average per hour. And you can see here's the time, it's 8.18. So it's been nine and a half hours that uh, this has been running the freezer. And we also uh, kicked in some lunch there with it. So uh, it's about 5% now. So we're gonna squeeze probably about another 15, 20 minutes out of it before it dies. I'm just gonna go ahead and cut it off and finish my video so I can get this out to you hopefully tonight. Okay, now we've finished the practical portion of the video and um, it's about 8.30 at night, and it was such a long day, I had to double up on my coffee. I never drink coffee at night, but I have a nice iced coffee going on here. So here are the results. With a 500 watt portable power station uh, and a five cubic foot freezer, chest freezer, you can squeeze out uh, 11 to 11 and a half hours. Now, I happened to throw some lunch in there. I warmed up a can of chili uh, in a small crock pot, and that robbed us of some of that power. So if you wanted to throw a meal or two in there, uh, it's going to reduce the time. In that case, we got nine and a half to ten hours out of it, so still a pretty good deal. Um, the average consumption of my five cubic foot freezer is 35 watts per hour. Your mileage may vary based on the size, make, and model of the freezer. So if you decide to go this route, then please test your equipment as always to see what you can get out of it and how it's going to work for you. Once you test your equipment and you find out what it's gonna actually be capable of doing for you, you need to come up with a plan. So if you expect brownouts in your area, blackouts, or just you experience short-term uh, power outages for a couple hours, I know when I lived in upstate New York, um, that happened all the time, right? Power would go out for two, three hours, once or twice a month. Um, so you can have this charged up, ready to go. You can plug it into an outlet in your house. So when you do experience those brownouts or the short blackouts, uh, you just plug it in, just let it rip, just let it eat and let it do its thing, and then go back afterwards, take it off, put it back on grid power, and then recharge your portable power pack. Um, if you have uh, a long-term emergency outage, you want to come up with a plan to alternate. So, like I said earlier, a chest freezer can go for a couple hours and maintain the temperature pretty well. It's going to rise up slowly, um, depending on how full it is and what you have in there and that type of thing. But um, like I said, any reputable freezer should be able to go two hours with a minimal rise in temperature. And during that time, you can alternate. You can charge it up, run it, charge it up and run it. And as long as you're good to stay frozen, you're good, right? So um, it's an emergency after all. As long as you keep it frozen, um, that's the important thing. So now some of these units do have pass-through charging. This particular one doesn't allow you to charge it up via solar or any other means and actually use the AC outlets. So you would have to go out and you have to charge it up, bring it, physically take it back and forth. Some do have pass-through charging and that's important because you can actually have your power station inside the house, run a cable out to a solar panel outside, and while it's charging, it will also be able to power the freezer um, utilizing the AC outlets. That's called pass-through charging. Some of the older models or the less expensive models don't have that feature. That's a good feature to have, not necessary. You pay a little more for it in most instances. So um, that's an another option to consider. And I will put uh, a list of recommended equipment below. I don't have a problem personally using it for a while, taking it out, using it, taking it out. You know, what else do you have to do in an emergency anyways? <laughs> you know, you're gonna be just trying to uh, keep things going around the house. So um, now, you also can get bigger capacity units that'll run for longer. This just happens to be what I had on hand to test with. This is the sweet spot for me. It's a little over 500 watt hours and it's got a 500 watt pure sign inverter in it with a life PO4 battery. Those are the features that I look for. And like I said, that's the sweet spot when it comes to price and capability for most people. Um, you can go into the thousands of dollars literally on these and, and uh, you know, obviously they run longer, they have more features and stuff, but just because they run longer means they have bigger capacity and it also takes longer to charge them. So you have to keep that in mind. So what have we learned from the video today? We learned that you can use a freezer to effectively fight inflation by buying products uh, on sale, 
freezing them and using them later, right? It's an effect, very effective tool. If you can get good deals, grab them, freeze them, and you'll be saving money. Um, uh, the second thing we learned is portable power stations or solar generators are valuable tools. You saw that I can actually run my freezer on this to keep my food from spoiling, and I can also cook on it at the same time. <laughs> That's valuable, right? You want a jack of all trades piece of equipment that you can use for multiple things. I mean, I could have plugged my phones in, um, you know, small electronics and that type of thing while I was keeping the freezer running as well. It's just I chose to make lunch, you know, whatever. I was hungry, so. And the final thing that we learned, and probably the most important, is double stuff Oreos are likely in the top 10 medical discoveries of my lifetime. I think they actually helped me through COVID. Who would have known, right? But anyways, so if you learned something today, uh, please like the video, um, subscribe to my channel so you'll know when I have new videos coming out. I promise they'll be coming out more timely now. Um, and uh, most importantly, if uh, this could benefit somebody that you know or love, please share the video with them. Thanks and talk to you later.